So, Mayor, what's happening this week with our camper that's got you pretty excited? We are finally getting a new electric residential refrigerator. We're getting rid of this guy, and we're getting a new one. Yeah. So stick around. We're going to tell you, you know, why we're making this change, why we're going from the fridge that came with our brand new camper, and only five or six months later, we're going to swap it out and go a different route. One, two. Okay, so Mayor, this fridge that came with our camper is what they call an absorption fridge. Right. And it runs differently than the fridge in your house, which they would call a compressor fridge. Right. Okay, so when we got the camper, uh, it came with this. We actually wanted perhaps the compressor fridge, but we gave this one a try because there are some advantages for some people, but for us, this fridge has not worked out at all. This fridge is just one giant disadvantage across the board. Yeah. So in in five months, our consistent issue has been... Cooling. It yeah. does not even remotely, uh, especially the refrigerator portion, cool our food. We have dumped so many gallons of milk and pieces of fruit and meat and cheese products that I stopped counting the amount because they don't reimburse you past $75, so. And, and in fact, at some point we went out and we bought a, like one of those, what I'd call like a dorm fridge. Right. Um, you know, or a beverage fridge, because we needed something. Takes up space on our floor. Yeah, it takes up space over here in the, on the other side of the living area. Um, but we had to put our milk and cheese and meats in something that would keep it from spoiling. Yeah. There's two types of fridges that you can get in an RV. The typical compressor fridge like you would have at home and then again the absorption fridge like we have here. Um, the absorption fridge works a little differently because what it does to get the refrigerant to go from liquid to gas is it heats it up and it heats it up um, uh, until basically it boils and becomes a, a gas and then that starts the process where it absorbs uh, the heat out of the refrigerator box and expels that heat. Uh, the compressor fridge, like you have at home, compresses the gas into a liquid state. Um, and so I, that's what I understand the differences are. So, the, you know, there are pros and cons to both in an RV. Um, in your home, you pretty much only ever see compression fridges uh, because they run on your 120 electric at home. But in, a, in an RV, People will go with the absorption fridge or what they might call a two-way fridge because it can run on two types of power. It can run on propane. Actually, some would say it runs better on propane uh, or it can run on shore power. And there are even some smaller ones that can run on battery power. This one could not. This big one runs either on propane or shore power. And the biggest problem I think is that in order to heat up that refrigerant, it creates a ton of heat. And the heat's behind the unit but then basically it's never getting the refrigerator cold enough to safely maintain your food. A compression fr fridge obviously works a different way. It's got a pump that pumps that refrigerant. Uh, so it's an electric pump uh, that pumps the refrigerant and it just doesn't generate the same kind of heat as the uh, absorption fridge. And so the thing that we're seeing with the absorption fridge is they really can only get your refrigerator about 40 degrees colder than the ambient outside air. So uh, a fridge is supposed to be between about 33 degrees and 39 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm. So as long as the outside air is like 79 degrees or less, you'll probably be okay. Um, the trouble is it's summer and it's been a particularly hot summer for most right. of the US and the outside temperatures are way above 79 degrees and even the nighttime 
cool off temperatures are in the 75, 78 degrees. So the fridge never has a chance to catch up with that. And that's what we've been experiencing this whole time. Right. Even on the best of days, I think some nights we had where we got down to 42 when we were in the UP and um, we got into the what they call the safe zone for the refrigerator. Right. Um, the, the freezer never did. Right. And, um, but again, as soon as the daily temperature increased, so did the temperature of the refrigerator right out of the safe zone again. Right, it's just because these absorption fridges, whether you're running on propane or running on shore power, they generate so much heat behind the unit that that heat is just too much for the unit to then counter the outside temperature. And our camper, you'll see, has vents on the outside, and we took extra steps of adding extra fans both inside the fridge and outside, but it's just not enough, so. Well, they even replaced. We replaced the whole fridge. The original with refrigerator with the exact same refrigerator. We did that about two months into having it, um, and they were sure that that was the problem, that it must have been a unit problem with the refrigerator, and it was not. The exact same thing started happening all over again. And so the compression fridge, you know, there's pros and cons, like I said. So the pros of the propane or two-way absorption fridge are for those of you who want to do boondocking, it does let you get away and not be on shore power and still have a working refrigerator. Right. Um, it's also quieter. This fridge is much quieter than yes. the electric kind. Yeah. Um, and it's... Uh, again, I think those are probably the okay. Those are the main pros that people would there say is. is that they're yeah. they're quieter and they let you go boondocking. And the pros to the uh, standard compression fridge, like you have at home, would be that they actually cool much faster. They'll probably cool down a fridge this size in two or three hours, and they're not affected by the outside ambient temperature nearly as much. Um, you know, the cons might be that, yeah, you have to be on shore power or you have to have a generator and batteries or some kind of setup so that you can, you know, with your inverter, if you have an inverter, you'd be able to run off your, your RV batteries for a period of time. Um, uh, that's, that's the con, you know, you can't, you can't run out and boondock for a week, most likely. Um, the other cons is they are a little louder, you know, they're louder than the, uh, than this one is. Um, but the pros for us is just outweighing the cons. We because it keeps your food cold, yeah. and that's the whole point of a refrigerator. So we'll show you, like today, it's about 82 degrees outside, and our fridge, we've, we've picked up these um, thermostats or thermometers at Walmart, and our fridge is currently at about 55 degrees, which is way outside of the safe zone. So that's why we're not really keeping anything in the fridge that could go bad because we end up throwing it all away. It's a um, kind of a hermetically sealed pantry. Mm -hmm. um, so you could keep like flour in there or sugar, but nothing else. So we bought this brand new. Um, so it came with all the warranties from Keystone and um, the subsequent like other warranties from Norcold and the other parts of this that are made from other extended companies warranties. right yes. and then we bought an extended warranty package from the dealership on top of it out of all these warranty packages only the dealership has honored their um, warranty um, Keystone has left us and as we have found um, all other owners in the dust this is a known problem with our model they stopped uh, putting the Norcold absorption fridge in these because they knew it was but they won't admit that nor will they reimburse us for the cost of putting a brand new refrigerator into their brand new yeah. rv um that along with a few other things that i've seen in these forums um keystone has a lot a lot i'd say in the thousands of frustrated owners who spend thousands tens of thousands of dollars on um campers that break immediately yeah. that fail them major systems like a refrigeration system or a heating and cooling system um that's one of my biggest frustrations you, you buy yeah. a brand new camper figure i won't have some of those issues that i had when i had a used camper and i think we've had more worse. Yeah, yeah i think we've had more issues buying a brand new camper yeah. than we have with a used camper and this is the third year production model i think so so they they've had a few years to work out the kinks yeah. Um, but 
they have been slammed with warranty calls and are not honoring any of them and they have an over a year backup on um, any repair work that you want done there um, and we've also run into authorized keystone authorized dealerships that are supposed to be willing to repair and honor keystone warranty work they, they will they will refute they they won't work on any keystone warranty work because they're not being reimbursed our dealership was not reimbursed by keystone um, for the replacement refrigerator and we as far as we know and have tried will not be reimbursed for uh what is it almost six thousand dollars worth of replacing work this replacing refrigerator. this refrigerator for a basic we live in this so mm -hmm. it would be nice to have a refrigerator that worked um norcold also we initially started with them yeah um and they basically hung up the phone on us said it was yeah. either Go the to your dealer. Go dealership to your it was a dealership issue it was a manufacturer issue they they hung up the phone yeah and um, I, I don't know, I just think it's a buyer beware thing. It's not that we yeah. didn't know these things. We just didn't realize how how many things would go wrong, how many major systems would go wrong, how many things would go wrong, and how frustrating it was to deal with nearly on a daily basis, um, just trying to track these people down and still not getting any kind of relief. Yeah, I think that, you know, we don't want this to be a major bummer. What we're hoping is you'll learn, right? So in right. this instance, we bought one with the absorption fridge and you know the size of this camper means boondocking isn't that common we might do a harvest host right. here and there but you know we're not able to get way out off grid in a 42 foot long fifth wheel a lot of those places right. aren't traversable so we we would tell you our experience has been the absorption fridge has been way more headaches than it's been uh, worth. And it's worth, at and least at this again, size. You, yeah, that's right. You may have different needs. Maybe you will have a smaller camper or a smaller fridge. Maybe you're in a, in a colder climate where, where you're not dealing with uh, temperatures in the 90s and 100s and 80s. Right. Um, again, you might have different needs, but our warning would be that for us, right. um, you know, in, in the southeastern U.S., uh, has not worked well for us right. at all. And I think we did all the right steps. We we had the RV inspected by an independent before bought, yeah. inspector before we bought it. But these um, many of these were problems that don't become apparent until you have spent a few days in your rig. Yeah. And we bought this for the floor plan. We still yeah. love the floor right. plan. It's a, it's a fantastic floor plan if you're going to live full time with five or more people. Um, but I just think it would be buyer beware. I, I mean, if you have the capability to be very handy, you'll be better off. If you have the capability to buy a floor plan that you love in a used rig and then renovate it to be what you want, that's probably your best bet. Yeah, I, I think that too. Um, so again, this week we're getting the new camper and we... Uh, no. <laughs> so this week we are getting the new fridge installed and we will uh, come back to you with more details um, again, what we like about this fridge is the big size. It was our old rig, the fridge was much smaller, yeah. so we were pretty excited about the size of the fridge. Uh, so the, the unit that we're putting in is very much the same size because it fits in the same box here. Right. Um, but it's just a residential electric fridge. And we will report back after we've had it and after we've used it for uh, you know a few days or a few weeks to give you our findings, how it's holding up. Okay, so we went out to our dealership in Alabama and we spent about two days there um, getting the old fridge removed and this new fridge installed and that was probably five or six weeks ago now and yeah. we uh, are just closing out this video with kind of our feedback after uh, you've had enough time to use the new fridge. What's your what's your feedback? Um, well, the number one thing is it actually cools food and freezes food, which that's all we were looking the for. The last two fridges <laughs> did not do. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it performs extremely well. It's very spacious. It's a residential fridge. Yeah. So um, fits all of our stuff in. Um, it's just really really nice to have a refrigerator that keeps your milk cold and not chunky. Yeah, that's it. I mean, it, we if the other fridge worked, we would have stuck with it, but this one uh, is working for us great, and we've used it now five or six weeks at least, so we can give you our honest feedback that for us, the electric fridge has worked great. The temperatures were still hot outside. Uh, the outside ambient temperatures were hot when we first got it. We were, were, uh, had no problem with it keeping cool, 
and that's continued to be the case uh, yeah. ever since. So we yeah. are no very issues. happy with the change that we made. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, if you like this video, please be sure to subscribe to our channel, and uh, we'll see you next time. My own web show. My own web show. Everybody wanna know. My own web show. My own web show. My own web show. How will it go? My own web show. My own web show.